The biggest risk to production planning is material availability. Having the right materials at the right price and of the right quality is critical to ensure production continues uninterrupted. Without all materials, cash spent can't be returned as profit from finished goods. One mistake in procurement or production planning can easily cause margins to be missed. While the first area that we should focus on is procurement, with volume purchase contracts that are used for purchasing supplies. With this procurement overview dashboard, a procurement officer can keep tabs on supplier performance, off-contract spending, and contract consumption. And the entire dashboard can be filtered to a specific material, or supplier, or some combination. So here I've got a filter that's set up to just look at a material called batteries. I could just as easily change the entire dashboard to just look at it from the perspective of one supplier. So if I was about to enter into negotiations with this supplier to renegotiate a contract, I could filter this dashboard and look at everything in a single pane about this supplier. But an important area for production planning is ensuring volume contracts will not be consumed before they're renegotiated. Volume purchase agreements include the quality, delivery, and pricing terms that are essential for product-centric companies to compete as a supply chain. So let's take a look at this quantity contract consumption analytic tile. and let's actually filter it by material. So let's say we wanted to monitor our battery supply here, and now it's filtered this graph here by supplier. But let's say we want to take a look at the trend of consumption to make sure we're renegotiating before our volume purchase agreements are consumed. So here we can see the actual consumption in this blue line. And we can also see this orange line that shows us by Q2 of 2019, we believe this contract will be consumed. So if we want to stay in front of that and renegotiate the contract, this is a learning procurement that at this time, long before this time, they should have a new contract set up with suppliers. But let's say we want to save this as a tile so we can be alerted specifically for batteries. So here, I'm going to save this as a new analytical tile. And I'm going to choose a trend as my format. Battery, consumption, contract. And for the value measure, I don't want the consumption. I actually want the predicted consumption. And I want to be alerted, let's see, when it's 75%. 60, and 50. Then from a dimension perspective, I want to see this by supplier, and that sort order is fine. So I'll hit save here, and it's actually going to create a tile in my home tab. So I'm gonna go home here, and due to some caching, I need to refresh this page. And so here's our new tile that shows us that battery consumption is approaching our target values. In this quick overview of procurement, we see how procurement can make sure that production planning has purchase agreements in place with suppliers to ensure materials are always available at the right price, quality, and time for production. But the area that S4 HANA is most well known for helping product-centric companies is in material requirements planning. With S4 HANA Cloud, product-centric companies can employ traditional top-down material requirements planning, where SAP has been a leader for many years. But unique to S4 HANA Cloud is that product-centrics can also now leverage bottom-up material requirements planning, also known as demand-driven requirements planning. Let's see how MRP and DDMRP can be used together. 
Let's quickly look at traditional MRP, where we can manage orders that are for the production of discrete goods or orders for processed-based manufacturing for food, chemical, and recipe-based products. So let's start with just production orders. So here, S4 HANA Cloud is indicating that there are multiple orders that are missing supply. And so I could run MRP on any of these, but I'm going to go and manage this bottom order. If I look at the Milestones tab, I can see when this order is planned to start, finish, and I can see the different operations that are involved as well. If I go to the Material, I can see what materials are required and their availability. I can see the production order, information about who the order's for, and when it's supposed to start and end, etc. But if I go to this Components tab, I can see the different components that are needed. So here I can see I have most of the components except for the frame. So I could just start an MRP run and generate purchase orders for any of the missing components. But instead, let's drill into this component and go manage it at the component level. Down at the component level, I can see different quantities of purchase orders that are pending. But I see that eventually I'm short by 600. If I go to this timeline view, I can see how the quantity is going to vary over time, but eventually is going to be 600 or so short by the end of the day on May 24th. So let's go back to our table view. Let's follow this order resolution here. Here, S4 HANA Cloud is generating three possible solutions to the shortage. In one case, we could change an existing purchase order. So if you see that purchase order with a 500 and the arrow, that's basically increase this purchase order that's for 500 to increase it by 600. It's also saying we could create a new purchase order for the 600 that are missing or a new purchase rec. Either way, and I can actually simulate this order or this action. So if I simulate this here and say I'm going to increase this purchase order, if I needed to even see the timeline again, I could. But this simulation, I could then just go and directly apply the simulation. So you change the quantity of this purchase order, etc. But I could quickly take action to resolve this issue.